everybody, I am Joe Slants and I would like to welcome you all back for another video. Anyways, um, got a couple of days growth, about three, four days growth. Time to go ahead and whack it off. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do ourselves just a pretty much, for the most part, good old razor rock shave. The razor is the razor rock quick change if you didn't watch the last video um, I went ahead uh, it was my birthday uh, my girlfriend asked me what I want for my birthday I said razor rock game changer 84p jaws open comb double-edged safety razor and she snuck in a little kit which had and oh and I also got a um, alum stick because I had no alum, but my girlfriend snuck in. Oh, there's my dog. My uh, girlfriend snuck in this kit that had the quick change here, which is, you know, just your basic butterfly twist open. Um, nice knurling, good thick knob on the bottom. TTO knob. And that came with a. One moment, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Had to ask my girlfriend to let our dog in. She gets quite loud when she wants in. But anyways, the kit also came with a what the puck container of the black label soap, which is a barbershop tweezer. Smells really, really nice. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I think the one soap I'm using is based off of Floyd Blue. And it is this one, the Blue Barbershop, or Blue Label, however you want to put it, of the Watt the Puck. It's great soap. You can get four, all four pucks for like 20 bucks. Um, the kit also came with a original style plus soft brush. I've got several of them. So I'm sending, you know, that one went to my friend Christian, or is going to my friend Christian. Anyways, um, but the brush I'm going to use is one I got from this, which I got the soap from. Oh, and we'll top it off with the Blue Barbershop Splash. But the soap, uh, brush, which I got from Dennis in that last shipment, I've used it once. Um, haven't used it on camera, and it is this one. Boom! Razor Rock Hulk. has a 34 millimeter plus soft knot. I mean, look at this thing. This thing is a beast. Um, it's a great head shaver brush. Anyways, let me take a drink of water. We'll go ahead, wet the brush, and get to lathering up the soap. I ended up putting my puck, I don't know, I can't remember if I mentioned, in my little blue lather bowl I got from this as well, or whatever that color is, with a little brush rest. And it fits perfect in there. Takes a minute to get this brush wet because it is so big. And it's a beefy brush, guys. Get a little water on the puck. And start loading the brush. Anyways, the weather's gotten quite nice here. Other day, uh, we had one heck of a rainstorm here. Massive amounts of thunder just poured down. It came down. She's actually uh, tonight's Friday. That happened back on Monday. And we just got a whole lot of rain. So it was nice. That's good, bro. Let me wet my face. We'll go ahead and we'll just smear this excess blue barbershop. The scent is wonderful on this. I really like the scent on this soap. It's definitely a winner. Oh, 
One moment. Dry my hands off. Grab the Hulk. As you can see, doesn't take long to lather your face with this thing. I mean, it's just such a huge brush. I'm getting soap all over myself. Sorry guys for not editing that out. Dry my hands. Alright. One sec. I can't remember if I mentioned it. But the blade is a Gillette Silver Blue. I believe it's on its second use. With the green. Let's see how this quick change goes. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Wow, that's efficient. Smooth. Feels good. I like it. I like it so far, that's for sure. This would be a great travel razor, actually. I had to rinse my finger off. Not a bad amount of feedback. I'm not sure what these quick change razors run, but uh, whatever they run if it's not more than say, I don't know, a Parker. And that would probably be a really good deal. Oh! New subscriber, guys. He's been subscribed for a bit, or been following for a bit, and is recently a subscriber. Alan Hurst. Thank you, Alan. One moment. Anyways. Thank you for subscribing, Alan. I really appreciate it, as I do. Yeah, got soap in my mouth. Oh. Shaving soap does not taste good, folks. <laughs> but anyways, he said he'd been kind of following for a while, or for a bit. And, uh, you know, he just recently subscribed. So, I appreciate that. He uh, made a Blazing Saddles reference. Um, which I got a kick out of. Kind of sounded like he was calling me a little bit of an old fart. <laughs> but it was all in good fun. I took no offense to it. Yeah, I'm 52 years old now, so yeah, I'm a little bit of an old fart. I'll admit it. But, you know, I'm an old fart, but I still rock out to heavy metal. <laughs> I love my heavy metal music. I really do. You know, heavy metal from the 70s, you know, 
hard rock from the well pretty much rock from the 60s 70s and 80s well 60s and up um, some of my favorite bands were like Five Finger Death Punch, Breaking Benjamin, Godsmack. Lincoln Park. Hailstorm with Lindsay Hale is the lead singer. That girl can sing. Disturbed with David Dryman. Corn, of course. They do come from my hometown. Well, not the town I grew up in, but the town I live in now. In fact, their recording studio is like a five minute walk from here. Or at least the studio they used to use when they record it. For years I thought the place was abandoned. I didn't know until probably about a year ago that that was actually their studio. But I'll tell you what, they came through here number of years back. Um, they had a, it was touring with Rob Zombie and I forget who the other group was, Video Drone or something like that. And Video Drone was all right. The lead singer was a little odd, but it was all right. Um, and then Rob Zombie plays, absolutely just blew the roof off the place. And then Korn takes the stage and absolutely sucked. Whoever set up their speaker system had so much bass pumping, you could barely hear the lead singer, Jonathan Davis, you could barely hear him. Um, you know, you could barely hear the drums and you know, you could barely hear the guitar, lead guitar and all. It just, it was not a good, good setup. Um, eh, disappointed. Uh, me and my brother made a huge mistake. Cause it had been years since either of us had really been to a concert. And we go ahead and we are like, we saw about what the prices are and it's all general admission was whatever general admission was like 20 something bucks i forget what it was and we're like oh all right we'll get general admission it was a good second pass i'm really really happy with this razor um so anyways we go in and we're down there on the floor and it, it it hit me and my brother dang near at the same time. We're like, we're in the mosh pit. Uh-oh. And nobody had taken the stage yet. So we're like, well, got to make the best out of this. Just got to make the best out of this. Um, you know, we paid for these tickets, man. Big concert, Rob Zombie, Corn, yeah, we got, we, you know, we'll make the best of it. Well, us making the best of it wasn't the best for us, let's say, because I'll tell you what, when the music started, you know, we were in our 30s. You know, mid 30s and here we are surrounded by you know 18 against the grain 15 to 18 you know young folk you know in their 20s 
You know, a lot of people in our age group, I imagine they was like, General Mission, screw that. <laughs> but, um... Next day, me and my brother felt like we was the tackling dummies for, you know, the Chicago Bears or something. Um, or like we went ahead and we got thrown in a wrestling ring with, you know, three, four hundred pound wrestlers because well, we got our butts. We got our butts banged around. Um, <laughs> if you have been following my channel for a while, you know about my vision and, um, my right eye is prosthetic and it comes out. I have an implant that's hooked up to the muscles and tendons that used to be hooked to the eye. So I can move it. And, uh, it's not like the old days where they just make a glass ball, paint it, and pop it in your skull. That was a good pass, that third pass. Wow, third pass already? Woo! But, um, the first hit I take in the mosh pit, my eye shoots right out of my head, and I tell my brother, and he's like, goes after it, and he's on the floor. People are just kicking him and stomping on him. And I mean, he, he comes up and he'll, I got it. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and rinse off and then we'll hit, hit it with the alum. Wow, that was a good shave. Um, yeah, if um, you want a good, most likely considering it's Razor Rock or Italian Barber slash Razor Rock. If you want a good budget friendly option, get the... Um, the quick change. It's a nice, pretty decent razor. It's, I don't know, maybe mid-aggression. It's definitely not mild, but it's not uber-aggressive. Um, definitely not Jaws 84P or Game Changer 84P aggression. I don't know. Ooh, a little bit of sting. I pressed a little hard right there. Um, I don't know. Maybe a little bit above mm, a vintage red tip. Yeah, I pressed a little hard in a couple of spots on my neck, but my face feels great. No stinging at all. All right. Go ahead. Let this sit for a minute. And then I'll be back for the post. That's nice. That's really nice. All right, let's go ahead and let's do the touch test. Baby butt smooth up on the cheeks. Jawline is really good. Um, shade really nice down along the goatee. Um, the neck. Oh wow! It got my problem. I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm going to be dead honest here. When I got done with the 84P Game Changer, my face was baby butt smooth. The majority of my neck, baby butt smooth. But right down here, um, I had a little bit of stubble here and here. It's my trouble spots. Um... Maybe I didn't quite hit it at the right angle, but that quick change, yeah, uh, I got it really 
really close. I mean, I'd say 99.5.67% BBS and the Game Changer Jaws was about 90% BBS. So yeah, that's a really, really efficient little razor. I'm really happy with that. Wow. Anyways, so anyways, back to my story. So me and my brother, we of course got our butts. Hang on guys. Ended up dropping a key. But anyways, um, that goes to my roll away. Um, where I keep my medication on my Millennium Falcon thing, uh, key ring. Um, but anyways, so the next day, me and my brother was just absolutely miserable. Key Dickinson's with Chazel. From that concert, we had a blast. Um, we couldn't hear that good. The next day, <laughs> I mean, um, our ears were kind of ringing for pretty much the rest of the night and we wasn't quite clearing not clearing hearing clearly we weren't clearing clearly um we weren't hearing quite clearly but we had a blast but there was one incident where me and my brother we had to go into protector mode because I see at the time I could get around without even needing a white cane so I see this big tall guy come down into the crowd and he's got like a, um, we'll use Sterling's Arcadia after shape bomb, but he comes down with a kid probably eight years old into the middle of a mosh pit. And, you know, me and my brother, we were just pretty much just, you know, not getting violent or anything in it. We were just, like, kind of nudging people away from us and, you know, just kind of bouncing people around a little bit. But I see that kid and... One moment... And this little kid looked absolutely horrified. Um, which I don't blame him. There were some, there were some big, big, big dudes in that mosh pit. Um, the kind of guys that when they're moshing, you just stay out of the way or you're going to get slammed or something. But I yelled my brother, Curtis! Curtis! Hey, what? I'm like, I'm next to this kid, and I'm like telling the kid, don't worry, don't worry, kid, we got gotcha. you. Oh, come here. He comes over, and I'm all, some dude just left this kid. So my brother tells the kid, stay between us, and me and my brother was basically back to back, sitting there pushing people away. And I mean, some people, they wanted to try and mosh on us, so, you know, me and my brother, we, you know, threw a couple of stiff arm, a couple of clotheslines, and, you know, and, and one guy wouldn't, wouldn't stop, and I can't remember, it was either me or my brother had to punch him in the jaw for him to back off, and then all of a sudden, like, eight or ten security guards come wading through the thing, and they surround the kid, and they hustle him out of there, and we're like, I, I was, I was pissed. I was pissed for that guy, for uh, that guy. I mean, you don't do that to a little kid. You don't take him into the middle of a heavy metal concert mosh pit and sit there and go, hey, just stay here and take off. But that was my big heavy metal horn concert adventure. All right, time for the aftershave. Oops. If that concert took place today, and me and my brother would have been dumb enough to 
go ahead and get down in that pit. Ooh, we wouldn't have come out the other in anywhere near as good a shape. Because I'm 52, my brother's 50, and, you know... We ain't 1998 young anymore, or 97, whenever the hell that thing was. Not a lot of sting. The Blue Barbershop aftershave smells actually really, really good. Um, not a lot of sting. There's some. Because, of course, it's got alcohol in it, but it's got some good stuff in it. Oh, man. Mm. I'll wipe some into the goatee. Anyways, guys, that's the shave. Likes, comments, subscriptions. Always appreciate it. Um, by the way, if you're still with me, thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for the birthday wishes. If you need to reach me via email, my email address is in my About section. And I hope you all take it easy. Have a happy and safe Halloween, and I'll see all of you on the flip side of the blade. Or I should say, I hope you had a safe and happy Halloween. Anyways, I'll see all of you on the flip side of the blade. Bye-bye now.